We'll go ahead and continue our media availabilities for today. We're joined by Denny Hamlin, driver of the number 11, Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota. If you have a question for Denny, go ahead and raise your hand and we'll get a mic to you. We'll start over there with Jordan and we'll come to Kelly on the front. Jordan Bianchi with The Athletic. Um, what's your mindset coming into this race? Are you thinking points? Are you looking at win? What are you thinking? To your, to your right. Okay. Uh, say again. No problem. Uh, what's your mindset going to the race? Are you thinking points to advance? Or are you thinking you need to win? Kind of how? What's the approach? Yeah, I mean, I'm coming here to win. Um, you know, that strategy won't change unless situation changes in the race. Kelly Crandall, racer.com. Danny, I have two for you. First, um, how would you describe this round of the playoffs in terms of previous ones? Did you is this the most frustrating? Is that the yeah. word? Is it? Yeah, it's it's a good word for it for sure. Um, you know, I think that uh, when we saw kind of how the tracks were placed in the playoffs and and whatnot, we knew that um, you know the adding of Atlanta was going to be a big one. Um, that uh, certainly you know was going to put some variability in the results that uh, you can't always plan for. Uh, but still, uh, you know, you got to execute and certainly, um, you know, kind of look at the top five, look at the bottom five. It's certainly not something you would have predicted, certainly, or and not have seen for the first 27 races, 28 races in the year. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's a, it's a new ball game now and you still got to go out there and perform. So, um, yeah, frustrating um, being that, uh, you know, we haven't had the results Certainly, um, but today's a new opportunity. Um, something fun I just saw on Instagram you posted about Stephen A being at 2311. Was that a casual visit, or can we expect something, anything from that content wise? Yeah, um, you know, obviously his relationship uh, with, with Michael is pretty close, and we had a, a great sponsor summit over a two day period uh, at Airspeed over the week. So he came and did a speaking engagement for us, which is fantastic. We'll go to Matt. Matt Weaver, Sports Not. First of all, is Lulu safe, secure somewhere? <laughs> What's the <laughs> resolution is. there? Yes. What's the resolution? Yeah. Uh, this is her last shot. <laughs> <laughs> um, kind of a, a big picture question, though. I mean, we, we've talked a lot this season about the parity, and I think that kind of segues into the way that some of these overtimes and road courses play out. When you guys communicate with NASCAR in the competition meetings, do you feel like they are receptive to some of these conversations? They seem to be with the tire, right? Like, mm -hmm. are they aware mm -hmm. that something might need to change or these races are going to continue to devolve into more of what we've seen the second half of this right. year? Um, you know, truthfully, I, I'm not aware of any conversations that uh, the teams have uh, or drivers have as far as influence on the schedule. Um, Competition, yeah, uh, certainly rules. You know, they're continuing to look at ways to make short tracks better and, and really putting an emphasis over the last year on the tire. Um, we definitely saw something in the right direction. Watkins Glen and some of the other short tracks. Uh, I'm really excited to see what happens at Martinsville uh, with that tire. So, um, yeah, I think we're trending in a direction that we used to race at, you know, decades ago to age myself. Um, but you know, still the parts and pieces are all the same. It's still going to put it in the driver's hands like this weekend to, uh, to go out and differentiate yourself. Uh, but yeah, I think that, you know, the, the collaboration, uh, has been good on the competition side. Uh, but ultimately, you know, they, they still will make decisions based off of what they feels best and, um, certainly, uh, react to given situations. Uh, Danny, uh, right here. Yeah, uh, to you. Hey, <laughs> Trenton Warson with FrontStretch.com. Um, so with Bubba Wallace signing that extension and everything, does that imply that there's been any kind of charter movements going on with a 2311 signing? And if so, what's uh, what's has there was there anything changed to, to go into your favor that you're looking for? Uh, no, nothing's changed uh, on our side on that. Um, we've said for a while that we plan on racing uh, next year, no matter what, and so we're we're sticking to that. 
We'll go to the front to Bob. Uh, Bob Parker's Fox Sports, a couple. Uh, on Bubba's extension, is that, um, was that something that you felt like was a no-brainer? You know, obviously he ran well but didn't make the playoffs. What yeah. do you want to see out of him or do you need to see out of him? Yeah, I mean, the 23 team needs to make the playoffs um, every year. Um, I think that that's our expectation. And then, you know, make a deep run and, and finish in the top 10 in points. That's kind of our expectation of kind of where we're at right now. Uh, just getting in. Um, it's hard for me to say that that'd be the only expectation, uh, but it is an expectation to uh, uh, given the standards that we're given for ourselves. So um, he knows that uh, he needs to get better. I think he has gotten better. So as long as he continues that, um, you know, last year when he made it on, on driver points, he was 14th this year, 12th. So, you know, while it won't look great in the final box score because of, you know, once you get in, then it, who knows where you go? You know your 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 floor is only 16th. Certainly this year the end result is going to look worse than last year. But we know that given the stats that he's had, laps led, all that, everything has improved uh, over what he had last year. It's just uh, got to take that next step. And at your sponsor summit, would you say your sponsors are more concerned or ask questions about the charter, or are they more ask more questions about whether you're going to advance? out of uh, this weekend <laughs> uh it was a little bit of both uh certainly but uh you know we we were really strong in our messaging that uh you know nothing is changing um from uh our employee standpoint to our sponsor standpoint um you know going forward you know what what battles we have off the racetrack is is on our, on ownership and uh we're going to make sure that uh, no one is adversely affected by that we'll go to john john newby alt driver Right here in the middle. So you already kind of addressed this with, you know, the stats that Bubba's been putting up this year. Obviously, you know, since he joined 20 through 11, his floor has kind of been 10 top 10s, then five top fives, then a pole win. But obviously he can most likely surpass those this season. So what have you kind of seen behind the scenes that have been like the biggest difference maker in him kind of getting those strides each in every season? Yeah, I think his willingness to continue to learn um, is, is something that I see uh, that's very, very positive. Um, you know, not that he didn't in the past, but I think his willingness to uh, put himself out there in vulnerable positions to, uh, you know, ask for help when he needs it um, has been very encouraging. And certainly we've seen, uh, from my standpoint, uh, more pace on road courses, more pace at uh, tracks that typically he wasn't as fast at that he needed to be. Um, so I think all that is 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 good. His his feedback's gotten better. Um, that's very very important. Um, so again, as long as he continues on that trajectory, everything will be fine. We'll go to Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Christopher Bell talked earlier this week that he thought. The spring race here was officiated differently in this, uh, from the first two stages to the last stage. His point being, there weren't as many cautions it, for flat tires and stuff like that. One, I just want to—I guess you agree with with that. I, I do, yeah. So, what is what is the hope, or what is if there's a messaging of what you want to see, or what the competitors need to see out of the officials with so much at stake on the track? Yeah. Obviously, they're going to play a role with what they do or don't do. What what do you need to see or what do you hope to see come Saturday night? Yeah, just consistency of, you know, whatever is a caution early. It's the same caution that's late. Um, if, if you're willing to let guys run around the bottom or the top with a flat tire, um, you know, let them, let them do that at the end of the race as well, right? And so um, just consistency as far as that's concerned. And as long as it's, you know, if, it, if it's called tight at the beginning, call it tight at the end. If it's loose at the beginning, call it loose at the end. Uh, those are the only consistencies kind of that I think competition would be looking for. Do you, have you seen any other types of discrepancies in this, I guess, short track races in particular, but mm -hmm. uh, this season with what, compared to what you saw in the spring race, or has it been more evenly, more consistent in those races? I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I think it, sometimes I think it depends on how tight we were on our TV window, truthfully. Um, if I had to, you know, kind of draw conclusions on, you know, 
when we want cautions, when we not, when we don't. Uh, but that's just a my tinfoil hat theory. We'll go ahead and go in the middle. D Denny, it, with three wild card races, uh, with three wild card races or two wild card Who races. Who gave you a the pass? Is it is it an advantage to know that you're going to have to beat two teammates to advance, or is it a disadvantage knowing your your teammates are so well or how their cars are? I'm not, I'm not really sure. I mean, I think that uh, I mean probably a disadvantage simply because you know we've had success here. They they know what we had in our car to make it work so well, uh, things like that. But you know, if they were with a different team, you know, maybe you get your competition guessing and panicking on, okay, we don't have enough pace. We need to wholesale our car, and then you end up missing it big. Um, but still, I think it's so tight, it's just going to be who outruns who. And so, um, you know, hopefully things work out in our favor. If not, then certainly, you know, we've got some team cars. All of our cars, there's three of them kind of in, in the question mark there. Um, would be awesome to get all three in, but you know, odds are we're going to get you know more than one. Go over here to the left and finish with Davey. Jacob Seelman, uh, Race Face Digital, over to your left, right here, Denny. Um, when you look at the spring race and the skill set that you talked about afterwards about saving tires and how you felt comfortable doing that and knowing that the tire and the track treatment is the same this time around, does that? excite you does that make you look forward to that style of racing given how you've been good at it over the years and you know going all the way back to your late model days i mean if i had a preference i would i would prefer it not be that way um just because it's another variable that you know is thrown into the mix and we talked about kind of cautions like is is that untimely caution really going to cost you you know if you make the nice conservative call to go ahead and pit before your tires go flat. Someone else doesn't. Caution comes out, traps you, laps down. Certainly it could have some big implications. Uh, so, you know, truthfully, I'd rather it just kind of be the natural fall race that we've had where you know, the best cars, best drivers find their way to the front. And uh, But if it's if it's a crazy race, we, we have to adapt. And, and certainly I feel like we're prepared for either. Davey Siegel with Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Denny, qualifying is obviously important everywhere. I know it's kind of difficult to pass most places we go. You've qualified in the top 10 in your last nine times here and won three of those. How important do you think that session later today is going to be for your success tomorrow? I mean, it's not totally indicative. You know, if, if I don't qualify well, you know, the rallying cry is going to be, well, we can win from anywhere, right? So uh, if you do qualify well, hey, it's a great start to the weekend. Um, but certainly you don't want to set any kind of panic in on, on your team or anything like that. I'm not going to be regardless of the result. Uh, but, again, I, I'm going to be on the offense starting – right away right and then so um i'm gonna be fine with the result either way but i just know over 500 laps here things will work themselves out and we'll have a shot to win then thank you Right, there's the checkered flag. Great job, driver.